So this is a finishing tool. It's around about three eighths wide, flat, flat, flat nose, radius corners. And it's actually a braised carbide, but that's just because that's the nearest profile I've got. We're taking, uh, uh, what is it? Point? Taking about a five thou depth of cut and a quarter of an inch, so 250 thou feet. Not looking too shabby. As for the greater cast iron, uh, bin 13. It's a piece of that sign. So, yeah, anybody's guess. It's just for a jig we're making up. So that's the finished pass. I can't actually, I mean you can see what looks to be the index positions, but I can't feel anything. That's the part, it's all in bit. If anything, the, the 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 rake from the front to the back, give me a big pod around the way, the rake from the leading edge to the back could probably have been reduced. But it doesn't seem to have created any issues. Yeah. Happy with that. Excuse the handheld again. Still not got around to jig for the uh holding the phone I'm attempting to measure the parallelism or there's probably a technical word for it but between that face and that face along the length to make sure that it's basically not getting narrower or wider as it's going along so I've cobbled together a Heath Robinson jig which consists of a, an angled face picking up on this uh, face to give me an average and just in case there's any deviations down it and then uh, a DTI supported holding the, the plunger perpendicular to the face which I've got so that I can adjust it up and down that up and down that by raising or lowering this set of clamps um, I've got it running on a, a gauge block so that it averages out any variation in this surface, this edge uh, and it's at the moment running on these to make sure that it can't twist and it's, it's giving me a reasonably consistent result <laughs> which I found to be quite useful um, so where we're at running down taking measurements and mapping it out if I zero it off at the front corner I got a jump of two thou, two thou, then down to a thou. So I'm just rechecking all this area here. Then I've got a thou, a thou, a thou, a half a thou, back to zero, 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 zero in the midsection. Up half a thou, and then I've got a thou, a thou, a thou, a thou, a thou. Um, right on the very tips, I've got zero again. But because of the ops offset of the plunger, I can only check that corner right on the edge and that corner right on the edge um, I might sp spin this assembly around just to give me another another check but uh, yeah anyway I'm reasonably happy that I'm getting a consistent approach because having checked this side of the plunger rotate the whole thing around and do it again I'm getting a mirror image <laughs> so it's not wider this way round than it is when I measure it the other way round 
Uh, got a few modifications to do to the jig still, just to set it, make, make the setup a bit easier. Um, but all I'm really fussed about is just being able to get a consistent measurement. Um, I'm gonna now bugger. Uh, that, so that's checking along that line there. I'm going to lower the DTI and check it there, which in if if I, my geometry is right, should give me the same variation that I've already already measured. Um, if it doesn't, then I've got to scratch my head and work out why. Uh, next after that is. Uh, once I've established what the measurements are going to be, I've got to determine then whether I'm actually going to try and scrape them to get them all, so I've got zero, zero all the way along, which would be the ideal, or does it actually really need it? Because um, the problem of trying to scrape it is I'm not, I'm, I can't work out an easy way to, to get a print off that face. Uh, I can't print that face directly onto stone because I can't see an easy way of holding it. Which leads me to the next next option, which is to scrape the face of the gib, bring that which needs doing anyway. Bring that to give me a nice flat, good contact surface, and then use that to print. That's the same length as these, but it's uh, what, I think it's something like two inches, no, four inches shorter than the uh, yeah, four inches shorter. So. I'd have to double double print print one end, re-ink, and then make a note of where the high spots are, and then print, or we'll probably try and print just the, uh, the the remaining piece four inches. That's probably the way I'm going to go. Um, but it's nice to know that I'm not multiple thousands out, thousands of an inch. You know, I mean, I'm reasonably happy that it's that it's only a thou. Yeah, rush hour's kicking in. So that's where we're at. Uh, I've never done anything on dub. Well, I've never done any scraping, as you all know. So I'm learning as I go along. Um, it's there's not a lot of information as to how you go about measuring these faces of a dovetail. It's quite a lot about the internal faces. So measuring between that and that with a pair of rollers and a you know, caliper between them or, or some sort of a micrometer between them um, and I understand you measure a certain height up and keep it consistent and then you just get in a print but at the moment I'm trying to do the best I can do uh, and I'm making it up as I go along which is frustrating because I've remade the jig three times um, but it's get, I'm getting there now. So I'm going to upload this in the hope and prospect of getting some positive, constructive uh, feedback as I have done on all the other videos because it's that that's keeping me going and basically helping me get this thing do, done. Um, if you've not checked it out, check out Diner Guy's channel. He's got a four-part series on the um, modification to this motor for this shaper which is now converted from 415 volt to 240 volt uh, by tweaking the internal wiring. It's all electricery and a little bit beyond me, but uh, Mike's done a smashing job. Uh, I do need to get in touch with him and arrange to get down to his place and pick it up and bring it back. But I'm a little bit off needing it just at the moment. So there we go. Um, answers and comments below. Look forward to hearing from everybody. Cheers. Not a great picture, I know, but you can see that I'm measuring the now at the bottom of the uh, the angle, um, and I'll check both sides. And it's uh, absolutely the same as everything else I've got. So the read, there's no variation from the reading this this position versus lower down position. Now I've cleaned off the crap. Um, yep, I think I'm going to focus. So, yeah, I'm reasonably happy that these readings now are right. Um, so, yeah, uh, nothing, nothing odd going on with it other than uh, these bits are the, are the low sections. 
from sort of what's that about a seven or eight seven or eight inch length of the lowest and then there's a th there it fades up to a thou what um thou more material either side of it um yeah don't i can't quite get my head around how that how that works in terms of the, the how the wear pattern of the machine would create that but then <coughs> inexperienced as i am is it any wonder be interesting to i've got to do the same exercise on here at some stage which means another set of uh, modifications another jig but then uh, not sure whether it's going to give me any great advantage because this thing will have been jacked creating all sorts of weird and wonderful shapes so i think once i've got a flat face on there the only measurement i can take that's of any real value is of that original machine face to a, a, a known position on there um so i might make up a little jig to hold a dti plunger dialed at a given height of a fixed length and just run it along the length uh, the only downside is I know that that face is going to be worn so it's going to have to run off the uh, yeah <coughs> I jibber on so there we go right off to a bit of editing So that's uh, that's the setup. And that's canted around to 35 degrees off vertical. Which the mathematicians of you would have already worked out. Is the wrong fecking angle? <laughs> Oops. <sighs> Time for a cup of tea and a bite, bite to eat, and then. Uh, Fortunately, we've uh, cut this piece oversized thinking of this very problem. Bugger. <laughs>